So you're preparing your family for survival. What does that mean, right? I mean, if you're new to prepping and everything else, being prepared is more than just a few items, a few things. There's ways that you really want to go about doing this. And first thing that you really have to do is sit back, think about things. Think about what you would do in a certain type of a emergency situation, regardless of what it could be. There's so much that is going on right now in this world that we live in. You can pick any one of the topics and put an emergency plan together. Your emergency plan really should cover any of those different topics. It should be a base plan for everything. So this way here, you're covered no matter what the emergency type situation is. Your base plan is going to cover you. Now, one way you could do that is, as I've talked about, get yourself some type of a notebook. It could even be a little pad or a notepad or something from Walmart or something that costs you a buck. Or you could buy yourself a nice one if you really want to do it up nice. And you could store a lot of information in this also. Okay? Phone numbers, addresses, directions to certain places, maybe to your safe point, your safe house. Whatever it could be, it's always good to write it down. Because you do see, we live in the technology age nowadays, where everybody likes to use these phones, right? You want to use your phone. Everybody puts everything on these phones. But what happens if this phone doesn't work? Or what happens if this phone breaks? Or goes dead and you don't have a way to charge it? What do you do then? This is a good backup to this. This can't be erased. This is always there when you need it. This could be there if you have the proper things to keep it charged, if you have battery banks to keep it charged, and if you have service in order to access if you store things in the cloud. Okay? So we can do it the old way and the new way, and this way here You've got all your bases and everything covered. So what do you do when you're trying to prepare and be ready for your family? What are some of the things you really have to think about? As you can see behind me, I'm in my spare room that I've turned into storage. Okay? Because we really don't use the spare room as much. So I decided to put some racks in here because it's temperature controlled, which is very important, folks. The number one thing you want to think about is temperature controlled. Depending on where you do live, you don't want things to freeze and you don't want things to get too hot. So it needs to be somewhat of a temperature controlled area. Number two, you have to have some place to store some products in a dark area. So if I'm in this room, and watch, I'm going to turn the light off. It's pretty dark in here, as you can see. So when the light is off, it's dark in here. It's temperature controlled. And the third point that you have to think about when you are getting ready to start prepping is, is it dry? Now, obviously, this is inside my house, so it is a dry environment. It's not humid in here. I don't have any leaks, you know, so you don't want to store stuff. If you have a basement and it's a dry basement, that's the perfect place. Because usually it's temperature controlled, it's dark, and if it's dry, you're golden. But if you have a wet basement, or your basement when you get heavy rain, it kind of leaks in a little bit. You don't want to store your products in that area. Now, talking about products, you have to start off and you have to have things, which I'm going to get closer here and show you here in a few minutes, 
But you have to have things to cover everybody in an emergency type situation. If you have small children, you need things for them, foods for them. If you have kids, teenagers, they're going to need comfort foods also, plus whatever it is that they like to eat. And then you as the adults, you have to have good solid nourishment that you're putting in your body because more than likely you're the one that's going to be doing a lot of the work that's going to be involved after an emergency type situation has taken place. So let me get the camera and we're going to move a little bit closer and we're going to take a look at some of the products and things that I do have and give you some ideas and I'm going to talk about some of these products I'm going to talk about what you have to do with some of these products, when you have to store some of these products, and how you can store some of these products. Okay, folks, right up here, this is all pastas, okay? Everything up here is pasta. This shelf is nothing but pasta. Now, as you see, I still have mine. I haven't done anything with them. They're still in the boxes that I brought them from. And in all honesty, folks, all you have to do is keep them stored in a cool, dry, dark place. And you have until, let me, you see how these dates are? This lasagna here is good until November of 23. We move over, we got some fettuccine, it's good till July of 24. We have angel hair pasta that's good until August 24. So you get the point here. When you have products like these, and you can store them correctly, you can leave them just like this until they start to get close to this date. And then once they get start getting closer to that date, what you want to make sure that you're doing is storing those products in Marlar bags. You can also vacuum seal these products at that point also, whichever way you can afford to do, but that is something that you want to do at that point. Up to that point, you're perfectly fine storing them just like this. There is nothing wrong with doing that. Now, up here, I do keep some of my freeze-dried goods. This is all my August Farms. I have a whole bunch. And, you know, I mean, I have maple syrup. I have Nesquik. There's some powdered milk up here. Now, the powdered milk I have to take, and I want to vacuum pack. I just got that in, so I want to vacuum pack all that. So then we come down. And we come down here, and I have a few pasta sauces. Now, this is kind of like a working pantry for us, so we're always pulling stuff out of here, okay? Because my other pantry is full also. This is in the spare room. I store a lot of extra coffee, Belvedas, because we all eat those every day. There's peanut butter in here, freeze-dried coffee, you know, there's Jiffy Mix. You come right down through. Now, once we get down to here... All right, we have our oats and crackers and cereals and those type of things. And then down here, and we have my rice that I have to put away. And then we come over here, we have some miscellaneous products and breadcrumbs. And then on the bottom down here underneath, I do store spare water. All right, I have a whole bunch in my other pantry. Now, let's move on over and we'll start up here. Up here... This shelving system over here, I've done videos on when I put this whole shelving system together. It's metal. It's very sturdy. It holds a lot of weight, folks. You can go back and watch one of those videos. But I start at the top. You know, I always start with the lighter stuff and work my way down as it gets heavier. You know, but I keep extra dressings and this kind of stuff. You know, I have my spam and stuff up here. You know, an extra little cocktail sauce. Like I said, this is kind of a working pantry. You know, you got Vienna sausages, um, beef jerky, extra oils, and all this kind of stuff. Shortening. I have a thing of lard back there. I have instant creamer. All right. And we come down through, and this is where we start getting into all the different types of goods. You know, from your spaghetti sauces, corned beef hash, your beef bouillon, chicken bouillon, and then your tomato sauces and stuff. These are the things that you have to really watch as things that have tomato sauce in them. Because they tend to go bad a lot faster 
than say when you drop down to here and you get into your potatoes and your veggies you know your sauces with your red sauce are going to go bad a lot faster folks and then we drop down here and then we have soups soups are great I do have um, a lot of different soups because they're really really good to cook with and to add to things you know then I just move right across you know mushrooms I have olives chest water chestnuts pickled beets and then down under here is just some other different products all my my turkeys canned turkey canned beef strips let me see if I can zoom in a little on some of these so we get right down in here you know I do have my ground beef that I bought before the prices went through the roof uh, beef aroni then we have all the tuna fish and chicken and hams sardines and all those different types of things so you see folks you start off small and you try and make sure that you are accomplishing what you want to do when you are prepping for your family's survival it's very simple to do it is the hardest thing in the world to get everybody on board maybe in your family some people are going to think that you are crazy some people they just don't understand why you are doing what you're doing and sometimes you just have to ignore those people don't tell them anything else once you've talked to them and just continue doing what you are doing because in the end you have to be the one that is preparing for your family's survival. So I am Survival Preparedness for Beginners. This is the first video that I'm going to show you on prepping for your family's survival. The next video is how to store a lot of these things once you are all done. A little sneak peek that I want to show you is this bucket right here. This is my homemade 72 hour bucket as you can see we have breakfast lunch dinner everything that you need it's all listed on the outside I keep this bucket very very close where I can grab it and go if I have to because there's a lot of good food in that bucket so till next time, folks, you all stay safe. You all keep prepping. You all keep your eye on the ball. And you keep doing what you're doing. Follow some of the videos that I have done. There's a lot of great videos out there that will take and they will help you along your way in order for you to be prepped and ready. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank everybody for everything that you do for my channel. So my thing is, we got to keep going. We have to get the word out. We have to make sure that people know and make sure that people understand the importance of preparing for their family's survival. So until next time, folks, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Thank you.